Microjig's 360 sled design combines the accuracy of the Zero Play miter bar with the versatility of our MatchFit dovetail system to make even difficult cuts easier. Follow along as we build it using the 360 sled kit. Building the sled starts with a blank of good quality plywood or MDF. The base needs to be cut 16 by 20. As you're cutting, save a strip about 6 inches wide that'll be used later for the fence. Set the rip fence so it just covers the blade opening and square the sled base to it. Mark the center of the miter slot on the front and back edges of your sled base. Draw a line connecting these two marks. This is where the zero play guide bar will mount. We always recommend that all the major features of any sled or fixture you're building are laid out first. Depending on your saw, you may need to adjust the locations of the grooves to make sure that they don't interfere with any of the zero play holes. Lay out the dovetail groove locations in four inch increments, both front to back and side to side. At your router table, set a one quarter inch bit to a depth of 11 30 seconds and set the fence to four inches from the center of the bit. Cut the four outside relief grooves by running each side along the fence. Rotate the workpiece between cuts until all four are complete. Reset the fence to eight inches and repeat the previous steps. The long dimension will get two grooves, the shorter dimension only one. Here's a pro tip for you. You can clamp a straight edge front to back on your router table eight inches away from the bit. So you can still make this cut even if your regular router fence doesn't reach that deep. And even if you have no router table at all, you can always make these cuts with a hand router and a straight edge. To cut the dovetail grooves, set a half inch, 14 degree dovetail router bit to a cutting depth of 3 eighths of an inch. Route all the dovetail grooves in the same locations and using the same techniques as you did for the relief grooves. Measure back one and three quarters inches along the center line for the zero play and mark the location of the first mounting hole. Mark the other two mounting holes at five and three quarters and nine and three quarters. The three adjustment hole locations can also be marked out using the measurements on the drill guide. You can also use a copy of the drill guide as the layout for all the holes. Drill half inch diameter counter bores 5 16ths of an inch deep at the three mounting hole locations. And finish the mounting holes by drilling quarter inch diameter through holes in the bottom of each counter bore. The three adjustment holes can then be drilled all the way through the base using a three quarter inch bit. Loosen the three locking screws on the zero play, adjust it to its narrowest setting, and then lightly tighten the screws again. Attach the miter bar to the bottom of the sled using the three three quarter inch pan head screws with flat washers. With the zero play mounted, the three locking screws should be visible through the adjustment holes. Set the zero play into the saw's miter slot. Push and hold the sled to the right so the zero play is firmly pressed against the edge of the miter slot. Use the hex key to loosen the locking screws and pull them gently back and to the left until the bottom bar contacts the left edge of the miter slot. Retighten the mounting screws and check the fit. The zero play should slide smoothly forward and back, but with no side to side play. When the fit is correct, loosen the mounting screws 
and gently slide the rep vents to the right edge of the sled base until they meet. Lock the rip fence, then retighten the mounting screws holding the sled tight to the fence. The fence is made up of the stock left over from the base. Rip one piece at two and a half inches wide and another at one and a quarter. Mark a line along the length of the narrow strip, a half an inch in from one edge. Then mark that line at one and a half and nine inches in from each edge. Drill 5 16 diameter through holes at these four marked locations. These will define the adjustment slots for your fence. Set up a quarter inch bit in your router table, one half inch away from the fence. Begin milling the slot by carefully lowering the 5 16 hole over the bit. Then start the router and mill the slot until the bit reaches the second hole. Mill the slots using a couple of passes, raising the bit and flipping the part between each pass until both slots are cut all the way through the part. The face part needs a dovetail groove. Set up a relief cut the same as before but an inch and a quarter away from the fence. And finish using a dovetail bit in the same setup. Finally, clamp the fence parts together. Clamp the base to the bottom of the face part with the slots positioned away from the fence. A couple of minutes rounding corners, then breaking edges and the 360 sled is ready for work. The base is attached to the fence using two of the inch and a half track screws and wing nuts that are provided in the kit. Placing the track screws in parallel dovetail grooves allows the fence to be positioned anywhere along the base and within a wide range of angle settings. But with the track screws in perpendicular dovetail grooves, the fence can literally be set to any angle through 360 degrees. The 360 sled is capable of making cuts that otherwise might require a couple of different jigs or fixtures. There's extra hardware in the kit, so custom stops and hold downs can be made as needed. And while the fence does not have preset angle stops, setting it using a precision gauge will allow for any angle to be cut. Whatever your cutting needs, the 360 sled can be set to the task.